What are you doing with these? They're L plates. I can see what they are, man. <laughs> well, I can't pull it off any longer, can I? Can't you? No. I've got my provisional. I thought I'd better get it done before the bad weather starts. Good idea. Who's teaching you? I thought you would. <laughs> oh, no. Most fathers teach their sons to drive. I'm not most fathers. Why not? Because you've got the wrong temperament. You're impatient, you lack concentration, and those boots are too big for the pedals. <laughs> I don't change my boots. But you can't change your temperament, Matthew. To become a motorist, you need patience, control, anticipation, quick reactions. How did you get through? What did you say? I said, how am I going to get through if my own father won't pass on his basic skills to his son? Even the primitive tribesman does that. But the primitive tribesman doesn't have a brand new 1800 in the carriage. <laughs> All he's going to break is his bow and arrow. Apart from that, you never listen to a word I say. Yes, I do. No, you don't. You don't even think I'm a good driver. What makes you say that? Oh, I've heard you whispering in the car. I've heard you muttering, put your foot down, for God's sake. I'm not deaf. I know I used to be like that, but not anymore. I've matured over this last year, and I've come to realise you're a good driver. Have you? You're careful. Better to arrive 30 minutes late in this world than 30 years early in the next day, Dad. <laughs> lose control of yourself and you lose control yeah, of the Yeah, all right, Matthew. I'm not that slow. No, and you've got very quick reactions. Yes, well, it may seem as if I've got quick reactions, but that's anticipation. When I'm driving down the road, my mind is working like a computer. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Yes, it observes the child playing on the pavement. The dog running out into the road, the ice cream van, the oncoming lorry, wet conditions. Oh, yes, all the information is being stored, ready for an emergency. And when it comes, I'm ready. Blimey. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> Here, catch. See, you missed it. I wasn't ready. Precisely. But if I were to tell you in advance that I was going to throw this pen for you to catch, then it'd be another story. That's anticipation. Here. Now. Ready? Catch. <laughs> you see, wrong temperament. Oh, that's right. Underrate me. You always do. But if you won't teach me, I'll teach myself. No, without a car. I don't need a car. Keep that noise up all night. I've got to learn. Uh, Forgot to put your seatbelt on. Uh, <laughs> and you're not using your mirror. Uh, <laughs> well, don't hold the wheel like that. You'll tie your wrist in a knot. Feather the wheel. Through your hands. Feather uh, the wheel. Feather uh, the wheel. Uh, all right, you're moving out. Now indicate. Mm, mm, Careful. Uh, now you're taking that coffee table on a blind bend. Uh, Pedestrian! <laughs> Matthew, why did you do that? Enid, you moved out from behind a parked coffee table without looking. I had a blooming sideboard at my back. Could have been a nasty accident. What is he talking about? He's learning to drive, Enid. Wouldn't it be easier in a car? Yes, yes, I think you're right. Go and put the old plates on, Matthew. Thanks, Dad. You're going to teach him to drive? Yes, yes. Oh. Uh... What's the matter? Nothing. Come on, there's something the matter. I just wondered if you had the temperament for it. What? After all, it needs patience, self-control. Who said I didn't have patience and self-control? You did when I asked you to teach me. <laughs> yes, well, that was different. Because I'm a woman? Of course not. It's just that I think that if God had intended women to drive, it would have given them stronger wrists and feet that reached the pedals. <laughs> that bad? <laughs> what a performance. I've never seen anything like it. When you get behind the wheel, you become a monster. You almost killed that woman. She stepped out. <laughs> Matthew, pedestrians always have the right of way. Especially on a zebra crossing. <laughs> well, I forgot where the brake was. What? You were shouting so much I couldn't concentrate. Well, of course I was shouting. You've given me a date. What about me? <laughs> My head's throbbing. Because of one little mistake. One little mistake, Matthew. 
You've noticed those triangular signs with the red edging and the black letters saying give way? Yeah. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you give way to oncoming traffic. Don't leap out of them. It's like an ambush. I didn't hit anything. It's only because you mounted the pavement. <laughs> and you realise you ran over that man's foot. That was the curb. But why was he hopping up and down on one leg? <laughs> well, you shattered my confidence. You've too much confidence, if you ask me. You were travelling far too close to that car in front. I could read all his stickers. <laughs> I'm a blood donor and come to Jesus. <laughs> and I'd have thought the one in the middle would have interested you. If you can read this, you're too close. <laughs> well, I could read it all right. I could read the printer's name as well. He was travelling very slowly. Of course he was. He wanted you in front of him. <laughs> I could see his face in the mirror. It was ashen. <laughs> oh, you were a menace. See? Well, better put these in the dustbin. Then. What? You're right, I'll never make a drive. It's a wrong temperament. Oh, I see. First setback and you're quitting, is that it? <laughs> no, but you said there was. Never a... mind what I said. You give up very easily, don't you? Well, I just don't think I'll master it. I think my nerve's gone. Well, then the best thing is to get straight back into that car. Go on, put the old plates on. Why? You haven't got any faith in me. Yes, I have. I'll show you how much faith I've got in you. I'm going to let you drive that car out of the garage, and I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm getting in. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't there something we should do before setting out on a journey? I've been. <laughs> not talking about that. <laughs> First thing we do is check the car is roadworthy. Have you looked at the tyres? No. Don't you think this front one looks a little uh, under pressure? Could be. Check it. <laughs> Seems all right. With this. 24. Ah, spot on. The manual says 26. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Yes, well, uh, I like them a little under. No, uh, what about the oil? Oh, we don't need to check that. There's an oil light. And what if the oil light is faulty? Oil is the lifeblood of the engine, Matthew. Dip it. <laughs> can't open it. Oh, that's going to be embarrassing, isn't it? Motorist arrives at the garage and can't locate his engine. That'll impress him. <laughs> Is there a catch inside? Well, of course there's a catch. I thought you'd pressed it. Check the oil. <laughs> Can't find the dipstick. Oh, dear. Another embarrassing moment. Can't find his dipstick. Well, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's usually down the side of the engine. <laughs> the trouble is they keep changing the layout. How long you had this car? Never mind how long I've had it. They can never leave things alone. It was perfectly all right where it was. Oh, well, the oil light will tell us. <laughs> well, is everything else all right? Mugs, the leads, water levels. Good. Right, well, you can drop the bottle. <laughs> Matthew. Yeah? You trapped my tie in the car. Sorry. Never do that again. Never close a bonnet without making sure that it's clear of all appendages. Could have been a nasty accident. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say another word because I've got complete confidence in you. Good. Watch your wing mirrors. I'm watching. Now, let you clutch in gently. Put your gear first. Now, look over your shoulder. Take a good line, now gently. Here we go. I'm not going to say a word. Careful.
No, I want a three-point toe. Three-point? Yes. In this street? Matthew, you're taking your test today. I presume you've achieved a reasonable degree of proficiency. I want a three-point turn. Not your normal seven. Not even a five. I want the three. I can't. Why not? Someone's watching me. Someone's watching you. That girl over there. Matthew, imagine you're taking your test. You can't stop because someone's watching you. She knows me. Well, the examiner's not going to pick a street where no one knows you. What do you want to do? Take it in Birmingham? <laughs> there he is with a green card in his hand, ready to pass you. I ask you to do a three-point turn and you say, I can't, someone's watching me. <laughs> Fail. Just get on with this. What about all these cars? They're not going to move. They're stationary. Just be careful and take your time. Use your brake. Balance your clutch. Now, there's a bit of camber, so watch it. Don't roll back. Don't, Don't roll back! <laughs> I think I ate it. Pull over, will you? <laughs> See what the damage is. It's all right, Dad. Hardly a scratch. I was thinking of the other car, Matthew. The one you hit. Well, just a few scratches, that's all. You better leave your name and address under the wiper. Why? Just a few scratches? And a dent? It's hardly worth spoiling an unblemished record. Unblemished record? You haven't passed your test yet. Can we just forget about it? No. No, there's a code of honesty amongst motorists in these sort of situations, and you must follow it. <laughs> Besides, someone's watching. So she got Window across the street. <laughs> leave your details. People think I am writing my name and address on this paper, but I am not. <laughs> Write down your name and address. And hurry. You've got your test in ten minutes. Never mind. I suppose things can get much worse. I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> now, keep calm, Matthew. Try and relax. Are you nervous? Yeah, you? No. You been before? Six times. I, I, I just hope I don't get, get Morley. He never passes anyone. He's, he's a swine. I've, I've, I've had him three times. He hates me. Not that I'm worried this time. Why? I'm on tranquilizers. It's going to be murder today. The road's up in the high street. There are diversions and they forecast heavy rain. What's the overall stopping distance if you're doing 50? Overall distance? 175 yards. <laughs> well, right, that would be 50 for the thinking and 125 for braking. What do you do if you feel tired on the motorway? I wind down the window and I turn up the radio. And if that doesn't work, pull to the side of the road and rest. Right. right. What must you always remember to do before moving off? Uh, use your mirror, look round for a final check and move out only when you can do so safely. Right. Do you want one of these? No, thanks. <laughs> what, what do you do if you start to skid on ice? Pray. <laughs> No, you, 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 you turn your wheel right into the skid. Then you pray. <laughs> do you know them uh, red triangles with the, with the zigzag? What do they mean? I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't give much for your chances. He's my instructor. Oh, is he? 
Well, I wouldn't give much for your chances either. It, my instructor never stays. He just can't bear to watch. <laughs> yes, well, I'd better get back to the office, Matthew. I'll pick the car up later. Perhaps you won't need to. Perhaps I'll pass. You won't if you get more, Lee. They say it's terrible on Mondays. <laughs> Not there's any good the rest of the week, can huh? they? Perhaps I'll get someone else. You, you could get Collins. He's all right. He gives them away. There you are, Dad. Could get Collins. Well, I sincerely hope so. <laughs> Mr Prendergast. Oh, my God, I've got more. <laughs> Means that. You could get Collins. Right. Hello. My name's Collins. Great. I mean, uh, my name's Willows, Matthew Willows. Yes. I believe you left this note on my windscreen. <laughs> I'll pick the car up later, Matthew. Buses run every hour. <laughs> well? Well, wasn't my day, was it? Was it a mood to start with? Well, you did bump his car. And he never let me forget it. He was moaning about it the whole time. Apparently he spent all weekend waxing it. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have left my name and address. No, you did the right thing. He'd respect you for it. He didn't. <laughs> You'll be all right if you get Collins. <laughs> Not today. You've got the whole family in bed with flu. I'm in a terrible mood. Don't make excuses, Matthew. Excuses? Did you see the high street? The road was up, the lights failed. There was a traffic jam and it poured with rain. We're aquaplaning most of the time. Well, you must have done something, right? How about the emergency stop? Wonderful. He banged his head on the windscreen. <laughs> Never mind. There'll be another day. No, no, there won't. Look, Matthew, everybody has to be tested. It's not pleasant and no one likes it, but that's life. Where are you going? To pick up the car. And when I get back, I don't want to hear how he didn't like you, how everything went wrong and how the whole world is against you. Just stop blaming others because you failed. Who said I failed? <laughs> what? Your car's in the drive, Dad. <laughs> Dad, can I borrow... No. The... <laughs> you didn't even know what I was going to say. Let me see if I can guess. You were going to say, can I borrow the car? Yeah. No. Why not? Because it's my car. It's the only one I've got and I need to look after it. Come on, Dad. It's not as if you're using it. Well, I am, as a matter of fact. It's a rotten night and I promised to take Enid home. That's no problem. I can drop her off on the way. No, I couldn't risk it. No, it's freezing fog out there, Matthew. Need a few thousand miles under your belt to cope with that. It's not that bad. Mm, not yet, but it could descend like a blanket. Like the fog of 63. <laughs> yes, that was a real fog. So thick you couldn't see the instrument panel. <laughs> I was known as cat's eyes in those days. Cat's eyes? Yes. Do you know what? They used to close in the daytime. Because <laughs> I could see in any conditions. When it was foggy, people used to ask if they could follow me home. <laughs> yes, the fog of 63. I led a convoy of 30 cars up that motorway. Look, I can see in the fog. Oh, maybe you can, but you forget Nenid. She wouldn't entrust her safety to someone who's only just passed these tests. She wouldn't mind. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, well, let's find out, shall we? Enid! Yes, Mr Willows? Oh, Enid, uh, Matthew's just asked if he can borrow the car, and uh, he said he'll run you home on the way. I'll get my coat. Uh, Enid, I, I would point out that I am prepared to take you myself. That's all right. Yes, but after all, he's only just passed his test. I mean, we would both understand if you felt safer with a you know, more experienced driver. No, I don't mind. But conditions are pretty bad, Enid. The freezing fog, the possibility of black ice, and he is very young. Ah, oh, but younger people have quicker reactions, don't they? What? <laughs> I'll get the car out. Enid, I appreciate you building his confidence like this, but if you feel safer with me... I don't. Well, if it, if it was that little incident in the supermarket car park, that wasn't my fault. No. But that could happen to anyone. Yes, but it did shake me up, Mr Willows. My neck hasn't been the same since. <laughs> I think I've got whiplash. You haven't said anything to Matthew? No. Oh, good, good, because he's still got a lot to learn and I don't want him to lose confidence in me. No, of course not. <laughs> Dad, there's uh, Mr Chapman to see you. He says you pranked him in the car park. What? <laughs> ah, we meet again, Mr Willows. You remember our little, um, incident in the car park? Well, in the excitement of the moment, we forgot to exchange our insurance details. Oh, no, that's all right, Mr Chapman. You caused very little damage and I've decided not to make a claim against you. Oh, thank you. Now, if I can have the address of your insurance company... Oh, wait, wait a minute. 
You're not making a claim against me. Well, you did reverse into me. Reverse into you? Reverse into you? You ran into me. I was carrying out a very difficult manoeuvre in a confined space when you entered the car park at speed and it hit me. I was barely moving. Barely mo You asked my passenger if you were barely moving. She's got whiplash. Well, I'm afraid that's your fault, Mr Willows. When you came out of your confined space, sharply... Sharply? When you entered that car park like a bat out of hell? I couldn't avoid you. And you made no attempt to stop. Stop? <laughs> Didn't even see you. Then how could you judge my speed? I see. We've got a lawyer here, have we? I couldn't see you because you were just a blur. Fortunately, I don't have to bandy words with you. I have a witness, Mrs Thompson. Enid, was there any way I could have avoided that collision? No. See? Not if you didn't see him. <laughs> Why didn't I see him? You were watching the front end. I didn't see him because he wasn't there. Then how did we hit him? We didn't hit him, he hit us. Nobody could have seen him. I saw him. Yes, and why didn't you say something? Because you didn't have time. No, you don't like me to say anything. You lose your temper. I don't lose my temper! <laughs> Look, I don't think this is getting us anywhere, Mr Willows. If I can just have your insurance details, please. Thank you. But this is totally without prejudice. I accept no responsibility and I'll fight you in every court in the country. I wouldn't advise it, Mr Willis. I'll uh, show you out. Thank you, Mrs Thompson. Perhaps I could have your name and address as a possible witness. Judas. She's been waiting for this moment. This revenge. Just spoiled a blameless record of 30 years accident-free motoring. Never mind that. We all make mistakes. 